Hi, my name is Pyongyang Kim. Uh, I'm an associate professor at the University of Denver. Uh, today in this talk, I will tell you about some of the research that I've been doing, showing the relationships between the poverty and the neurobiological uh, basis of parenting. Uh, the neurobiology of parenting might be somewhat unfamiliar topic to some of you, uh, but there has been quite a bit of research, uh, both in non-human animal work and human work, showing that uh, there's a great degree of structural and functional plasticity uh, during pregnancy and also early postpartum period. Um, so as an example, this is the work that we did earlier, um, showing that uh, in this longitudinal study that when the mother's brain images were uh, collected twice, uh, first, the first month postpartum, and second time, three to four months postpartum, and we show a structural growth uh, in number of brain regions that are highlighted here in red, including the prefrontal cortex, temporal, and parietal lobes. Uh, and broadly, these regions are important for parenting uh, for their functions, for example, emotion regulation and decision making. Another brain region that's very important for parenting uh, is the midbrain regions that also include uh, reward circuitry. So the same reward circuitry that responds to other rewarding things like drug and food, very interestingly during the postpartum period, that brain circuitry uh, strongly responds to baby cues. And it's been showing that the activation of this region uh, strongly support parents' motivation to care for their children. So in this study that we also uh, saw structural growth in some of the, the brain regions that are included in the reward circuitry um, and also otherwise important for maternal motivation. Um, so including hypothalamus, substantia nigra, and some of the strata reason, regions. And the amount of increase in this region was also associated the mother's positive perception of her baby. So depending on how many positive words uh, she used to describe her baby, like adorable and perfect, um, was related to the greater structural increase in this area. Um, and other studies have also shown um, the functional plasticity um, that's showing the increased brain activations to the baby cues during period of time, which uh, is also important for uh, sensitive parenting. And so the next question that, uh, that can be asked is that we already know that there uh, is a range of parenting behaviors um, and how well the mothers adjust to parenthood. So what are some factors that can be contributed to uh, individual differences the mothers have. And one of those uh, can be the experience of severe stress. Um, experience of severe stress might uh, negatively influence mothers' adaptation to parenthood. Um, and we were very interested in the question that whether that can be through disruptions in the normative brain changes that supports uh, parenting. And uh, we were focusing on particularly the two brain circuitries, one that includes the reward circuitry important for parental motivation, and the other uh, was the brain areas that are important for emotion regulation, uh, largely including the prefrontal cortex areas. And we chose these areas because the previous work, um, especially with non-human animal, um, that these areas are uh, vulnerable to stress, particularly. Indeed, in non-human animal work, there seems to be a causal relationship between uh, stress exposure 
and apparel brain plasticity. So high levels of stress, such as unstable or crowded living arrangements uh, or material deprivation. So providing very limited materials for nesting have been associated with more anxiety or depressive like behaviors um, and also impaired parenting. And the stress exposure has been also related to reduced structure and activation in the reward circuitry and prefrontal cortex uh, in um, animal mothers. So um, in terms of bringing this model to the human model, uh, we were particularly interested in the poverty environment as poverty environment can include some of these kind of stressors that people have used um, in the animal work. Um, and it's been also uh, well established that poverty is related to more negative postpartum outcomes, unfortunately. So low income mothers report higher levels of psychological distress and experience higher levels of stressful events during the postpartum period. And um, this has been the reason why the low income mothers have been targeted for interventions because they have greater risks for postpartum depression and negative mother and infant relationships. And um, I wish to share why the poverty environment is stressful environment. Um, it's more than not having um, enough money. So I want to share a story of one of the participants uh, in my study. Her name has been changed to protect her privacy. Uh, but let me share her story, uh, give you a little bit of snapshot of experience uh, of poverty. So Kelsey was in her late 30s. Uh, she had three young children uh, while being pregnant with another child. So for the family of five, her and her partner and three children, their income was $24,000 uh, per year. Um, and this was below federal poverty line, which was defined by income to needs ratio below one. And um, she also grew up in poverty and reported traumatic childhood experience and also a severe abuse from past partners. So two of her children were suffering from trauma due to the abuse from past partners. Uh, and uh, Kelsey needed to manage some behavioral regulation issues um, that were associated with those experiences. And Kelsey's own mother suffering uh, from depression, and Kelsey had diagnosis of depression, PTSD, and anxiety. And also um, during pregnancy, the whole family and also her own mother, so uh, six people needed to move into her grandmother's basement, which was only a one bedroom space uh, because of uh, income situation. So as you can see here that sometimes not having enough money can also be associated with a range of psychosocial or physical environmental stressors altogether can bring really high levels of stress to mothers while she um, is raising uh, several young children. So the first study with the smaller sample, we examined the associations between the income to needs ratio, so family income, and the brain activation in response to baby cry. And in this study, what we found was that as we expected, lower income, which is the x-axis on this scatter plot, was associated with the lower brain activation in one of the lateral prefrontal regions. Um, which can be involved in emotion regulation among many other uh, functions. And we wanted to build on and, um, and follow up with another study uh, with a bigger sample uh, because it's important for us to understand what aspects of poverty environment can be related to this dampened brain response to baby cry. So the next question in this study, which I'll go into a little deeper, uh, 
was which aspects of the environment of experiencing poverty will be associated with the brain and behavioral sensitivity to an infant uh, among new mothers. And that aspect that I want to discuss with you is this. Um, so stress is not exclusive to low income people. However, uh, there is a greater likelihood for low income people to experience multiple severe stressors simultaneously. So for example, in this study, this is the families with young children. And when we measured six different severe stressors like exposure to violence, family turmoil, child separation from family, and also noise and housing problems and crowding. And as you can see here in this bar chart, uh, the black bar indicates middle income children's stress exposure. And about half of those children actually report to experience one of these stressors. However, it's more rare for these children to experience three or four or five stressors at the same time. But if you look at the white bar uh, of the poverty children, uh, they're more likely to experience three four, five, or all of the stressors simultaneously. So we wanted to look at these situations in new mothers because experiencing multiple stressors can particularly toxic because it really immobilizes uh, someone's ability to cope with any of these stressors and it can really have significant impact on the brain as well as their psychology. So in this study, we had 53 first-time new mothers whose infants were healthy, and um, they were 42% Caucasian and 43% Hispanic in the sample, and about 42% of the sample uh, also had low income, and it was around four months postpartum period at the time of the, uh, the neuroimaging study. And we measured nine stressors. Uh, three of those were socioeconomic stressors. So not only low income, we wanted to see the subjective level of um, socioeconomic stress, so financial stress and food insecurity. We also had observed physical environment stressors that are typically related to poverty. So substandard housing quality measured by observation, noise measured by decibel meters and the crowding at home. We also measure three psychosocial stressors. We also wanted to measure this at family level, a community level, and society level. So there were marital dissatisfaction, violence in the community, and uh, the issues with the authority like social services. So as you can see here, experiencing any one of these stressors can bring really significant level of stress to um, anyone. Um, and on average, in our sample, uh, the number of the stressors were right below two, but you can see the range was from zero to eight. So some of the mothers in our study were experiencing five or six or eight of the stressors at the same time. And the fMRI paradigm that we used uh, was to play the either on baby cry sound, their on baby's cry sounds, or control baby cry sound that was uh, same for every participant. We also had white noise that matched uh, on baby cry and the control baby cry sound. So let me play a little clip of the control baby sound. Okay, so that was just the five seconds of the baby cry sound. Um, the mothers were actually listening to this for 20 seconds at a time, and uh, there was 10 repetitions per uh, condition. So as you can see here, uh, this is very effective fMRI paradigm to activating the brain regions that are very important for responding to the baby cues. And uh, when we examined the data, as we expected, that uh, the higher number of stressors that mothers were experiencing on the x-axis uh, were related to lower 
brain response to baby cry across her own baby cry and also control baby cry um, in this brain region, uh, right insula and inferior frontal gyrus. So uh, among many other functions, this brain region is related to emotional information processing, uh, including negative emotional information. So. Um, and we typically see increased brain activations uh, in this region that's showing the mother's sensitivity to the cues. Um, but unfortunately, the higher number of the stressors were related to more dampened brain response to baby cry. Another region that shows similar associations uh, was right superior temporal gyrus. So as you can see here, again, the higher number of the stressors were related to uh, lower brain activation in response to baby cry versus white noise. Again, these brain areas typically show a greater activations in uh, brain baby cry sounds, um, showing the, uh, the mother's sensitivity to the cues. And when we examine the mother's interactions with her own baby, the lower brain response seemed um, more concerning. So in this chart, that we coded mother's sensitive parenting behaviors, which we call maternal sensitivity, during mother's interaction with her own baby. And the lower sensitivity was related to lower brain response to baby cry in both of those regions. Um, so in conclusion, the, the study may suggest that the study exposure, particularly um, in the context of poverty, can be related to more dampened brain responses to the baby cry which that further may be related to lower maternal sensitivity because um, that dampened brain response to infant cry in the brain regions that are important for social and emotional information processing uh, might increase mother's difficulties of um, respond sensitively to the baby cues and further related to her difficulties in developing deep long-term emotional bonding with her baby. And we have some other examples of the stress like poverty and trauma related to mother's brain response to baby cues. Um, and interestingly, across these studies, that it seems like those just prefrontal cortex areas are particularly vulnerable to stress exposures, um, rather than the, the reward circuitry like the, the areas that support for parental motivation more directly. Um, so uh, in summary that I want to um, end the, the, the presentation to discuss some of the implications of these findings. So uh, the earlier discussions that I had, because there is uh, brain plasticity that we observe in new mothers during the pregnancy and early postpartum period. Perhaps that is the reason why that the maternal brain may be also particularly vulnerable to negative experiences like a stress exposure. Um, so low income and exposure to multiple stressors can be targeted to identify the mothers who are at risk uh, for suboptimal prenatal outcomes. At the same time that I want to point out that when the mother's brain are sensitive to negative experience, it's possible that the brain is also equally sensitive to positive experience. And indeed, uh, when we're interacting with our participants, mothers actually show high levels of motivation for behavioral changes. Indeed, pregnant women uh, and new mothers tend to have a lower uh, rate of substance use. Um, and re they really wanted to kind of improve and provide good environment for their children. So it'd be great for us to capture um, that period and um, really thinking about ways to promoting resilience and supporting the mother's well-being and needs um, alongside child's needs. Because so much focus is right now is going to the children's needs, uh, but it'll be important for us to consider the mother's needs at the same time. Um, so the mothers will be more empowered to provide um, supportive environment, environment for their children. Um, 
Um, I want to thank um, all the funding sources and also everybody in the lab uh, and the participants to make this project possible. Thank you so much for your attention.